you already know there are two types of triggering the first one is my level triggering whereas the second one is my edge triggering this edge triggering is further classified into two types the positive edge triggering and the second one is negative edge triggering the positive edge triggering is for the rising edge when the clock goes from 0 to 1 whereas the negative edge triggering is for the falling edge when the clock goes from 1 to 0 the question comes here that how we can have a edge triggering from a level triggering I am having my clock like this a clock is a signal in which the duty cycle is 50% it is high for 50% of time and it is low for the 50% of time so using this clock what we can do so that we can have a uh, edge edges this is not edge this is the level okay but we want edge like this so how we can have this thing it will be done by using this circuit we call it the differentiator circuit you must have studied this thing in your analog electronics so we use this circuit to get our edge triggering in this I am having one capacitor one resistor and the value of my capacitor and resistor are very small the input voltage is VI and the output voltage is VO so our first aim is to find out the value of the output voltage and then we will simulate it using the multisim we will make our circuit here and we will see the output waveforms by using the oscilloscope given in this simulator. So it's a very interesting presentation. You are going to learn so many things in this single presentation. So let's start with our voltage output. We have to find the value for it. For this I will consider the current in the circuit equals to I and I will use Kirchhoff's voltage law for that let's say the potential drop across the capacitor is VC and the voltage drop across my resistor is VO no doubt now the KVL gives me VI minus VC minus VO equals to 0 or I can write it VI equals to VC plus VO so VC can be calculated by Q equals to CVC where Q is my charge, C is the capacitance given in the question and VC is the voltage drop across it. Q can be written as integration of I dt and CVC is on the right hand side. Now by dividing both the sides with C the capacitance I can have VC as 1 by C integration of I dt. So I will replace this VC by this value and uh, I will try to have my V output in terms of I so V output by Ohm's law is I R so let's write our V I it is equal to 1 by C integration of I dt plus I R okay now the consideration that I have made is the value of C and R is very very low so by doing that I can neglect IR so the VI in that case is equal to 1 by C integration of I dt our prime goal is to find out the value of V output but in this expression there is no VO so we have to do something so that we can have VO in this expression and that can be done by replacing this I by VO by R by Ohm's law so VI is equal to 1 by C integration of VO by R dt. Now I will differentiate both the sides and it will give me DVI upon DT equals to 1 by RC VO. Now I will multiply both the sides by RC and in that case I am having my final result as RC DVI by dt rc is constant so v output is proportional to the derivative of input this vi so if i say my input is this clock then the output will look something like this positive spike the negative spike and again positive and then negative so you can see that differentiating the clock signal this is actually my a step signal I can have the impulse one 
because if you differentiate it you will have this small portion and it will look something like this you can uh, learn this thing in your signal sense system it is very easy so the differentiation of the clock signal gives us impulse which is edge but there is one problem you can see it is having the positive edge as well as the negative edge so it's quite confusing right now we need to eliminate either the positive edge or either the negative edge for the proper working of our circuit so a small change has to be made in this circuit so that we can have either a positive edge or a negative edge that we will see later first we will simulate it in our multi-sim and we will see that by giving the step signal we can have a impulse signal or not from this circuit so let's go to the multi-sim and uh, my first step is to have a capacitor so I will open this component panel and uh, here you can see a capacitor just press OK and put your capacitor you can change the value of the capacitor I will take the value equals to 1 microfarad OK and you can see the capacitor C1 is having the value equals to 1 microfarad. I will again go to the component panel to have my register and uh, here you can say the register is above the capacitor. We have selected it and made the value equal to 100 ohms. Press OK and you can have your register here. I want to rotate it so I will right click on it so that a new panel will open and you can select rotate clockwise and it is now rotated. I want to connect it so I will press here and drag this and connect it with the resistance and you can change the color of the wire I will keep it blue so that we can differentiate between the input and the output signals ok now you can see it is blue the next step is to make the input I want the input as the step signal so I will go to this sources and in sources I will select signal voltage source and here you can see clock voltage press ok put it over here and then connect it with the other end of my capacitor and uh, the color will be red frequency is 1 no problem let it be 1 kilohertz is the frequency now I need ground none of the circuit will work until we ground it so for that I will go to the power sources and in this I am having my ground so let's put ground here I need one more ground for my register ok the next step is to see the input and output waveform by using the oscilloscope so I will put the oscilloscope here and in this you can see there are two inputs A, B the A input I will use to watch the input waveform whereas the B I will use to watch the output waveform so let's connect it with the input here ok and the B will be connected to the output the blue one is my output the red one is my input again I will use the ground ok I will drag this ground and connect it with the negative of A and negative of B. So we are done with our circuit designing. The next step is to run this and see the output and input waveform. So I will run it and it is now running. You can see here. I will double click on this oscilloscope. You can see the red one is my input whereas blue one is my output. But it is not very clear to see right now. So I will change the scale. Now I will pause this simulation so that you can see the result. This red one is my input signal and it is a step and this blue one is my output signal and it is spikes, the positive spike and then negative spike like we derived on our board. This is my output and this is my input. Now what we can do to eliminate either this positive or the negative spikes that we have to see now and I will use a diode for this purpose. So let me rub this part of the board so that I can add a diode I will use a normal diode and the diode will be placed here like this and again I have a resistor and then the output is measured at this terminal because of this diode when it is positive for example when the positive spikes are there 
due to this positive spike the diode will be on and it will be short circuited and the voltage output v output is generated so i have nothing to worry about my positive spike will be there but when the negative spike is there what will happen the diode will be reversed bias and it will act like open circuit because of that the output voltage will be zero so this negative spike will be removed and again when the positive spike comes the output will appear and again the negative spike will be removed so by using a diode you can eliminate either positive or the negative spike so this is how we get our positive and negative as triggering you can also do this thing by using this simulator you can simply add the diode at this point and use another resistor to get the output voltage it's very simple i hope you got these things it's very easy and very important at the same time so this is all for this presentation so see you in the next one